Hey, this is JC and welcome to Small Brick City where we want to help you build a Lego city regardless of the space you have. This is the final part of the series and in this video we'll be doing all the detailing for both the inside as well as the outside of the building. I'm also going to add some changes to the outside just to give it a bit more texture and we're going to detail this backyard over here. And of course, we have to detail the interior of the fire station. Now, I'd just like to give a shout out to two subscribers. One is Robin Hood Bricks. He mentioned that the round brick over here, actually he mentioned it should be a square brick or a one by one brick, but it can't be a regular brick. It has to be a round brick for it to be closed, but it has to be in light gray so that there's visual symmetry for that. So thank you for that. Several subscribers also mentioned that they would maybe prefer to see this fire door open left and right to be split, so it'll be one third and two thirds, but I really like my accordion fold design. But it was Adrian Langby who suggested that the doors open from the right, because I originally had them open on the left, or from right to left, and it never occurred to me to have them open to the right simply because I guess doors to me always open to the left. But it actually makes perfect sense to now have it accordion folded to the right because you can have them fold this way and it doesn't embroach to the next building on the right. So this makes perfect sense. So I had to make some minor changes. Of course, the building technique changed uh, for this particular area over here, but I also shifted this white line in. This line is actually for uh, the motorcycle parking lot. So I intend to have a fire motorcycle and that will be parked outside here. But because now this door opens uh, over here, I had to shift it slightly. I also moved the ventilator, which was originally from here, to the side of the building, which I think looks fine as well. So those are the changes I did after the previous video. I did them offline, but in this video, I'll be completing the build in real time, starting with the exterior. What I like to do is add a little warning light here and this is usually when the fire engine is coming out and the garage doors are opening, there'll be some kind of warning light so people know to keep clear of the area. I also want to add a bit more texture to the top of the windows over here. So I will be adding in a rail plate above just to give it a bit more 3D texture. So I have to take out these 1x4 bricks and I'll put in a 1x4 series of plates as well as the modified rail plates just to give it that texture. For the back, what I intend to do is to add in a bit of a backyard, a bit of a dirty, not so finished backyard just to give it a bit more of an interesting look. I'll give a bit of greenery over here and over here will be more of a broken pavement I guess or just broken rock or cement. And finally for the top, I do want to add in an air conditioning unit over here to the top of the firehouse and I want to add in a ladder so that Minifix can access this roof from here because they would go up the fire escape over here, come up here and then come down to get to this roof over here. So those are all the exterior changes I intend to do, so let's get started. So here's what I've done. I've added that little warning light I mentioned, a bit of a bell as well. And uh, over here, I've added these modified rail plates and I had to work out the order in terms of where the black plate went, where the gray plate went, uh, just so that it looks uh, right. And I think uh, this is pretty good. It just adds a bit of texture. Now we come over here for the back. Uh, I think it's quite busy. There's real no need to put in those real plates. Now I'm looking at this. I'm thinking whether it's better to put in a black. So why don't I just take this out and I can do a visual comparison. I'll take this gray plate and I'm gonna sandwich the gray rail plate between two black plates and see if that actually looks better. Now that I look at it, I think it actually looks better. And that's the way it is. Sometimes you just have to build it 
uh, unless you really have such an amazing uh, visualization and imagination. But I think just having that black trim above uh, with this real plate in between looks better. So I'm gonna change that up uh, before I do the back. Okay, we've got that done and I think that we've added just a little bit of texture. I think that works. Now let's go to the back and let's work on uh, creating some detail here. So as mentioned, I am going to do some greenery over here and then we're going to have some kind of a broken concrete over here just so that looks a bit distressed and matches this cobweb over here on the window as well. So this is what I've come up with for the back. Just a bit of a disheveled look, overgrown weeds and stuff. There's even a crawler coming up uh, to the back. So I think uh, that's pretty nice. So I'm going to add a consistent weathering, but this time in concrete and stone over on this end over here. And here's the matching broken up concrete that I have for the back. I think uh, that works. Maybe we can put a rat in later. All right, let's move to the roof now. And I mentioned I wanted to put uh, a ladder over here. That's this side over here. Uh, but I also wanted to put an air conditioning unit over here. And I've pre-built one that would fit. And I have to find the right place to put it because remember when this is over here, we do not want to block the ladder, which will be somewhere here. So I think we could just do something maybe off to the side like that. Something a bit random. And then I'll put the ladder in as well. So this is what we have. An air conditioning unit over here enough of a pathway to come here down the ladder to get to this other roof over here i think that works pretty well all right now let's go to the interior and i think i'll start with the garage itself so we have the truck there this ample space and if i open this up uh, what i want is some equipment I think I do need to change up the walls a bit. So I'm thinking of putting equipment at the back over here because that makes sense because you want to load it on the truck. And uh, these lockers over here, basically, uh, we have to assume that equipment will be inside. And then I want to put something on this wall over here, which means that I will have to build this up. Originally, I put this panel here, but I created this wall of tools. And basically, this uses a 4x8 plate. And I've got the single modified towel clips and I put in all the different tools so that they look like they're hanging from the wall and I want to press that against modified bricks over here so that would probably be somewhere here but that means I do have to fill up the wall and subsequently I will also want to move this previously which I put in I want to move it probably somewhere here and then I'm going to make this grey as well. So only the back of these cupboards are going to be this light tan colour. So a bit of uh, redoing needs to be done. But I think uh, we can do this uh, for the sake of the internal decoration. This is what I've detailed for the inside. I've replaced some of the bricks with modified bricks with studs. That's why I can put the tool board on the wall over there. I've also got modified bricks with clips to hang walkie talkies. And over here, we've got this holder for an ax as well as a sledgehammer. In the corner of carbon dioxide, fire extinguishers and spare fire hoses. Uh, this is lockers or more cupboards for storage and uh, I just need to put some studs for door handles. And I think this is uh, pretty good. Um, not too much, we do not want too much clutter. And of course when the fire truck is in place, it really almost fills up the area and you can see that looks like there's equipment all around ready to load up the fire truck if needed. 
and if they need to maintain the fire truck uh, for example take this uh, portable water system over here uh, they could just drive the fire truck forward and the fireman could actually take this out and do the maintenance inside the garage like that so there's just enough space uh, very realistic space and uh, fully equipped with all kinds of equipment so i'm really happy with that now let's move on uh, to this administrative area or the office so for this area i will be adding in tables i'll be adding in uh, maybe a tv on the wall and over on this side uh, it just so happened uh, to have these stickers because they came from the Sanctum Sanctorum sets and of course if you build this you might not have these stickers but that's perfectly fine over here I think I'm going to put a small pantry of a water cooler a coffee machine and a waste paper basket so let's do that right now All right, it took some time, but I think I've got the final layout of the office area of the firehouse. Now, this is the main door that you go in over here. And let's have a look from this side over here. Uh, you come in, you get greeted by that checkered area, kind of just the demarcating the door and the reception. Originally, I wanted to have dark green tiles and white, but I think it didn't work as well so i prefer this dark red and white and uh, i think i'm going to change these chairs as well to another color so that they pop against the red so over here we've got one desk and there's a radio as well as this red telephone so that's almost like the i won't call it the call center but if they get a call from the main switchboard to attend to an emergency that's where they get the call and over here we just have a, another desk on this side and over here against the wall, we've got a water cooler, a cabinet with a coffee machine, coffee at the side, there are white cups for the water cooler, and there's a trash can over here. And on the wall, of course, very fire conscious, we have a fire extinguisher. And on this side, uh, we have a television. And we come over here, this is the door that goes to the garage. And over here, we've got some storage cupboards or lockers. So I'm pretty happy with that. I will switch out the chairs later on, but let's head over to the second floor now. Now I'm going to work on the interior of the second floor. This will be the resting quarters for the fire station. So I need to carve out space for a kitchen, a toilet and shower, as well as a sleeping area. So the good thing is the staircase is on the outside, so I don't have to worry about a stairwell or an elevator. I can fully maximize this space. It seems like a small space, but I think I have enough tricks to be able to really pack it in and have all the details that are required. A lot of the small builds that I'll be using for this particular interior were explained in my recent live stream, The Brick Design Breakdown. So check out the link in the card above or the description below. So let's start off with dividing out where I think the toilet would be. So I do have the toilet and this is my toilet. As you can see, I need to place this toilet somewhere here, I think. Now, I'm not going to worry about the windows will assume that there are blinds or curtains and i always do that for my builds because to me the windows are important for the facade of the building but also so that you can see inside from the outside so it's more interesting and in terms of privacy we just assume there are curtains or blinds as i've mentioned so i don't worry about those things but i had thought that the toilet will be somewhere here because this is the door, so you don't want the toilet right in front of the door. It doesn't make sense. So have it far away in the corner is good. And I will need a door, solid door, which would be somewhere here. I'm thinking about here because I figure this space will be my sleeping area. And I actually built a bunk bed. And as I mentioned in the live stream, and I taught how to build this, this reminds me of the bunk bed I had in basic military training when I was in the army uh, for national service uh, some time ago. Uh, but this is really realistic and it fits uh, 
a fire station because you have not much space and there are bunk beds and the great thing about this design is there's a ladder to go up but this ladder also is protection so you don't roll over and fall down and die in your sleep so i'll be placing this somewhere here against the wall somewhat like that so i think my toilet would probably come somewhere here so there's enough of a passageway for minifix to climb up this gives me space for a kitchen over here and I'm going to build a sink on this side uh, facing out and of course there'll be a shower inside here as well so that's how I've planned the space I'm now going to build up this wall first and I think I will have to take out some bricks here because I want to interlock this internal wall with the exterior wall so that it's more stable and then I'll put in all the details and then I'll work on the tiling which I think I'll just go with a simple grey surface so let's do this So here we have the interior, we've got a nightstand over there uh, with a small chest of drawers, there's a photograph, that's the toilet with the shower and there's taps on the wall. Over here we have a sink and a stove, a countertop with a hot dog and a fridge and of course I've got jumper plates so that this bed can fit in just like that tight squeeze but enough space for the minifix to realistically get up to the beds to sleep and even get through here to the resting area and that's the second floor i hope you enjoyed this final installment in building a mock from start to finish enjoyed all the details we added to the exterior and the interior of this fire station mock personally i'm pretty happy with it i think that it is very functional, the size is right, and we have all the elements we need for a very credible fire station. I will be doing a proper review of this particular mock and probably will also add some refinements and uh, improvements after I give it a rest for a couple of days and come back to it with fresh eyes. And that's generally something I always do with all my mocks. So expect to see a few more refinements when you see the review. Thanks so much for sticking with me in this series. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Check out these two videos before you go.